Siwa. Today I'm talking about seashells. Now before I get into the different meanings behind the shells that I do have that I'm going to be talking about, um, I'm just going to get into kind of an introduction shell. So shells are very unique. If you go to the beach, if you just look them up because they're pretty, if you look for them for jewelry, all of them are different. There's no one similar or same shell. They're all different. And the reason for that is because they are the exoskeletons of a mollusk, which is their forever home, basically. And what I find cool about that is that a mollusk's shell, it keeps it safe, it keeps it secure, it's solitude, it's independent, and that's what shells really do represent. They represent independence, um, protection, um, self-reliance, things like that. And the shapes of these shells aren't random at all. In fact, the uniqueness is what gives them their magical abilities and their different meaning. Now I'm this in of the history about, some sh about the shells. So shells represent femininity. Yes, they do have masculine attributes, but majority of them represent a lot of femininity, such as Venus, um, Aphrodite. If you know of the famous painting of Aphrodite, she's on a shell, that's how she was created. She's from the ocean. Shells represent beauty, they represent fertility, the moon, the tides, all of that. Um, the ocean represents the shells represent as well. Shells are also linked to prosperity and abundance. Different shells, um, like for me, I would use them in a money spell or a prosperity spell. If I need something to be coming into my life, I would find a shell that corresponds with abundance or prosperity, use it in a candle, use it in my spell work, in my casting, and that will give it the more potency in that spell for that abundance. And another cool thing I learned about shells is that they used to be used as currency way back in the day. And I think that also can be linked back to that prosperity and abundance um, that they also understood that shells, yes, they're pretty, but they do have their different meanings. And again, different shells all have different uses, not just spiritually, but also physically. Shells can be used as incense holders, bowls, used for rituals and smudging, things like that. Um, for example, an Avalon shell, which I'm about to show in a minute, um, can be used as a smudge holder. Now, a lot of, in the sea witchcraft, um, world <laughs> something gets disrespectful to mix fire and water so if you feel like it is disrespectful to mix fire and water i would suggest putting a layer of sand or feathers in that in the avalon shell in order to kind of separate the two because it's disrespectful to have the water element and the fire element if you believe that. Shells can be also used for rituals, back to the ritual statement I said earlier. For example, if I want something to come to me, such as a job offer, I would use a scallop shell because it also not only represents spirituality, but prosperity. Also, shells can be used to decorate your wands, to be put on your athames. Um, for example, if you have a nauticus shell, um, which is a spiral shell that goes up, it's a spiral shell, um, I have one, I'll show it to you in a second. Um, that can be used as an athame on your altar or for a simple logic spell. They're also connected to logic. You can also use shells in mojo bags. Now, if you don't know what a mojo bag is, a mojo bag is an ancient spell work that I use. Um, you get a bag, you do the strings, you put all your ingredients in with your intention, and you use your breath as the energy during when you tie it off. So you can use shells in that, in a mojo bag, to give it a more potent result. You can also buy shell, seashell wind chimes. Um, I kind of like, I want to get one because I feel like I just like having shells around that makes me feel really at home. And I feel like they just clanging together would make just a certain sound that would just feel really homey, I don't know. And also, seashells can be used for jewelry, obviously. I have a scallop seashell that I use for protection. It has a protection spell on it. And yes, you can put seashells on jewelry and use them for protection, use them for other things. 
it's up to you. You are your own witch, you can do whatever. I'm gonna get into finding your own shells. When I go to the beach or to a lake or anywhere where there might be shells, I always, always will either bring something from my home that I've already collected and use it as a offering or I will thank the sea or the lake or whatever body of water I have gathered that shell from. You always want to show your appreciation for the ocean. She's already been through so much with all the pollution, all of the overfishing, overhunting of animals, coral bleaching. She's been through enough, so I think she deserves a thank you once or twice. <laughs> and now I'm gonna show you the shells that I'm talking about. So first I'm gonna start off with the scallop shell. Now the scallop shell, like I said, is used for spirituality, prosperity, things like that. It also has a very feminine um, attribute to it, such as when Aphrodite's on a scallop shell in that painting, like I said earlier. And here is that shell. Here is the shell. I love it. I can just do a little video over this <laughs> to just kind of be artsy about that shell. And now I'm going to talk about the abalone shell. I think they pronounce it abalone, abalone. However you pronounce it, it is a very beautiful shell. This is the shell. It is very, very pretty. It has like a pearl kind of inside. And then this is the outside. It has the natural dips and holes in it. Some of them are covered up, but yeah. And it's just really pretty. You can use this for smudging. You can use it for a bowl, incense burner. You can use it anything like that. And I'm gonna talk about the nauticus shell. This shell has heavy association with logic, mathematics. Um, it also has been used in a lot of rituals, ancient rituals, um, that to help with your logic, your mind, your thinking. This is that shell. It's this, this cute little spiral shell. If you've seen it, hermit crabs like to live in it. Um, I like looking at them. I have like six on my altar, um, so I like them. They help keep myself grounded. When I look at them, I think I need to be in my head in a sense of I need to be thinking ahead instead of going off of emotion, which is heavily associated with water, but that's an entirely different video. And I wanna talk about the auger shell. Now the auger shell has masculine and feminine energy. It's all about completeness. And when I look at it, I kind of think of the Ace of Wands. Um, if you do tarot, um, you probably know this already, but if you don't do tarot, look up the Ace of Wands, kind of like that burst of I don't know, that initial energy. Algae shells are also connected with fire, also, not just water, obviously, but they also have fire attributes because of the athame. This is what it looks like in its full, and then this is what it looks like when it was broken. I found this and it was already broken. I have no idea why it was broken, but I just thought it was really pretty anyway. And I wanna talk a little bit about the cowrie shell. I don't have a cowrie shell. Um, I don't own one. <laughs> They're, if you don't know what they look like, it's a puka shell, if you know what that is. And they can be used for divination. Um, I know that if I were to have one, I would place them on top of my tarot deck. If I'm, I'll put them in a mojo bag. If my mojo bag has anything to do with me trying to astral project, trying to have more vivid dreams, Cowrie shells are used for your third eye, divination, your mind. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you liked this video and sorry about that two week break, life got hectic. Hopefully I can be making more videos a lot more consistently and I'll see you guys in the next one.